Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Today I want to take a look at this kit. It's a Richard Petty's uh, Oldsmobile 442 1979 winner. Uh, Daytona 500 winner, that is. Uh, by Salvino's JR Models. Uh, now, I bought this... Uh, a couple years ago, I think I've had it done about a year now, actually. So this is a this is a completed kit. Uh, but what I wanted to do, I wanted to go over some of the issues, uh, small as they may have been. Uh, but I want to go over a couple of the issues that I had and see if any of you guys have had any of the same issues. Or uh, if you haven't built this kit, maybe plan on building the kit. Uh, maybe it would be a heads up to you if you decide to uh, go ahead and build it. But first of all, let's talk about this Salvino's name right here. Now, I had heard about uh, Salvino's JR, and I know they had some uh, some older NASCAR kits. Actually, what they've done is they've actually bought the old monogram molds. Uh, I guess they acquired everything but the uh, the glass and the tires. So they made their own glass and tires. But all the other stuff, they acquired their molds, and they're repopping those out. Uh, so that's actually exciting too. But what I wanted to talk about this is this name sounded familiar to me and I wasn't sure, but what I found out, uh, there was a guy who was a communication specialist for STP during Richard Petty's career. And his name was Ralph Salvino. And I saw this name Salvino's and I wondered, well, is is that relation or is it you know, just a coincidence? Well, I got to doing some digging and I did find out that yes, uh, Salvino's and I believe this R, I believe that's, that might stand for Rick because Rick Salvino was Ralph Salvino's son. And how this came to be about, I guess Rick Salvino in the sun in 1989 uh, was starting a figurine company and he was looking for a sculptor. And so he was introduced to this guy, uh, Jim Rogers. And so they got together on that. And, and Jim Rogers, I guess it appears that he was a, a artist, uh, was sculpting licensed Disney and Lucasfilm, Warner Brothers, things as, and that nature, uh, as I understand it. So I thought that was a little interesting too. Uh, so they got together and then eventually they put together this model model car company this is in 125th scale and they got 18 years and older and i can kind of see why uh because of some of the assembly and some of the slight assembly issues that i had with it uh, that i wanted to pass along and share with you guys uh, and the biggest thing the biggest thing i had with overall assembly and we're going to get I want to talk about this other thing first here before I get to the body, because the body is actually one of the things that I had a problem with. So the first thing was actually the instructions. Now, at first, I mean, it's a nice instruction sheet, you know. You got, you know, the same picture there is on the box. And it's got a nice little write-up here about uh, Petty's career, you know, from his 200 uh, career wins it's over 700 top 10 finishes, 1184 starts, 513 of those being consecutive from 71 to 89. So nice write-up on his history there. That's that's pretty cool. And then of course, uh, there's your decal placement. Shows you, you know, what colors you need to have there for uh, to do it, you know, authentically. But the problem I had was when I got into the instructions. Now they're not bad. Uh, this is no deal breaker by any means, but what I found out on this is these assembly, like these, these dashed lines right here, get it up here where you can see that better than I'm talking about these dashed lines. Now the engine was really not a problem, you know, but when you get down into things like, like this one right here, like step six, just where these assembly, they all seem to be off. Like this one's kind of out here. It's kind of in limbo, and you're kind of left scratching your head as to, well, what is it talking about? So you kind of rely on this other side that they've got in place already. Uh, now, these here these here are pretty good. Like, see, this one's off. That one's off. But you know where that's supposed to go. Uh, 
So, like I said, it's not a deal breaker. They're not bad instructions. Uh, but it kind of put me in mind as I was going along, like, you know, like the uh, old AMT big rig instructions. Uh, weren't Didn't have the greatest clarity. But there's something I'm going to talk about here in just a few minutes that will actually be addressing this issue. And it may be changed by now. I don't know. I haven't I haven't got a recent kit from them. So, uh, but we'll get into that. But into the part that I was uh, getting at is on mine. Now, I did all my prep work. And I had all the chassis done pretty much, you know, after I got through the instructions. Which, what again, I say wasn't terrible, but it had its issues with me. Uh, but the issue that I had with mine was I got the body all done. I had all the paint work done. You know, the blue was on, had the clear coat on it. It was really, it was looking good. The only thing I didn't have the decals on yet, fortunately, uh, because it tends to be the, me that I do the decals the very last thing. So, I mean, I looked at the, I looked at the kit beforehand when I did my prep and everything was looking good, but I didn't look close enough. So what happened is I set the body on to get a fitment to the chassis and like everything was fitting up really nice. And so I final assemblies, when I went to put the windows in, now the windows are fine. Uh, they're, they're really sharp, clear, uh, really nice pieces. But my problem was this A pillar on the passenger side and pretty much all the way up through here and even this pillar, they were warped. And so the windows were not fitting, and I tried nine ways to Sunday to try to straighten these out. I mean, it just wasn't working. I mean, sometimes you put just a little bit like a, I think I took a hair dryer or something to it, and it just, nothing I did worked. Because I think it had a, actually, it had an arch in the top completely that maybe you didn't see just by looking at it, but once you really started getting in there to fit things up, you really noticed it. So, uh... What I did was, is their number was on the instruction sheet, so I gave them a call. Now, I bought this kit off of eBay, and it was sealed, uh, but I didn't buy it directly from these guys. So, what I did is I called, and I talked to one of these guys, uh, really nice guys to work with, and I called him, I told him, told him the issue, hey, I bought this kit, you know, I bought it off eBay, not directly from you guys, but I got an issue with the pillars uh, on the windshield and they're warped is can you help me out is there a way i could get a replacement body so he told me email me a picture of what you're talking about and we'll take a look at it and we'll see about getting your replacement body so i had mentioned something about the windshield got kind of messed up in the process of trying to get it to fit right so he corresponded back to me and said he was sending out a body in the mail. So I got the body in the mail. Not only did I get a body, I got a windshield and a back glass. Now, I never said anything about the back glass, but they sent both of them. Uh, so really, really good. Great, great customer service. I was really impressed with that. Uh, so uh, if you do get one of these and have an issue, I don't think you're going to have a problem uh, getting replacement parts. And so... What I want to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and reveal this. Because like I said, I've got this done. So I'm just going to pull this box. Oh, first, before I do that, I wanted to show you this. That I thought this was interesting on the chrome tree. Okay, now, uh, this is some... This is a heavy tree. Uh, because this is actually... This is actually uh, metal chrome plated. Uh, it's actually got a little bit of magnetism to it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh you can, it comes with an extra set of wheels. And this bumper and grill, I believe it's from the uh, the older style Monte Carlo. And it, it must be, and there was actually a, a, another, this is like a third bumper on here. One, two, there was a third bumper on here uh, that was not for this car. So I think they just must cast, and I don't know if all the kits are like this, uh, if all their... Oldsmobiles are like it, or their other Monte Carlos are like that, but they must cast everything together and just 
throw it in the box with every kit they've got. But I don't know that for a fact. But So this looks like the Monte Carlo. And if I would have to guess, I would say this is probably a Grand Prix. I could be wrong on that too, but it almost looks like a Grand Prix. So that was just pretty interesting. And this thing's got some big honking bumpers on it. Uh, so they're really stout. But anyway, proceeding on, let's pull this box up and let's take a look at this kit. So there's my finished product. And I'm just going to turn this guy and let him spin around a little bit here and I'll talk about it. So, uh, like I said, really nice chrome on there. Looks good. Uh, the bumpers, actually, I would say the best cement to use for that is super glue. Uh, it holds them really good. So that's what I did there. Uh, the wheels, now these weren't in the kit. Now, most of their cars, I believe, do have the, the uh, Goodyear for the tires. But I bought that as a separate uh, sheet and put those on being it was uh, missing. Got the foil hood pin decals on it. And just all your other uh, contingencies here. The STP back there. Really, really nice decals. Now these are power slide decals and these guys are awesome. If you haven't used the power slide, they're really good. Um, Mike's decals uh, has a lot of power slide options for a lot of different cars so uh, that's a good source i get a lot of my uh, decals uh, from mike's if i'm going to be doing a, a, a separate build but we'll turn this guy let him get spun back around here and i'm going to shut this off and then we'll pop this hood i'll just let you take a look underneath the hood here i'll pull him up closer to you there so Engine compartment there. I'm going to knock the camera off the stand. Look at me. And now this is a aftermarket distributor. This is a, a Morgan Automotive. Oh, I'll get it right. A Morgan Automotive Detail Distributor. Uh, I think their wires are scaled right. Uh, I like the wires in there. And it is a resin. It is a resin piece. Uh, the cap and the shaft both are resin parts. Uh, so weathered up the tires a little bit. Like you've got some miles on them. And they also, I guess, on these newer ones, and I think this was still part of the older uh, bodies like I had that I had the problem with up here. Um, but they reworked the grill on these newer bodies. I guess they had an issue with this. And there is because I had a little bit of fitment issues with the grill. So I think they've re uh, repaired that by now. Move along the side there. And I don't know why, but I didn't put the window net in here. Uh, maybe it's because I'll be able to see in there better. Maybe. I don't know. But but in there, we got the fire bottle inside there. And then again, this was the 79 Daytona. Now, this is actually... Let me get it back where you can see it. How about that? Uh, this car actually is a 77 body. But it depicts the car that won the 79 Daytona 500. And they also did this car in the Kale Yarbrough uh, version, uh, version and the Donnie Allison, which this car and those two cars are the three cars that made that race what it was. I mean, that... Okay, now I'm back from that little mishap. I apologize. But anyway, um, they're the three cars that made that race, I mean, what it was, really. And that's the one that put the NASCAR on the map. So... Um, but just builds into a really nice kit. Now, the one other thing that I didn't really care for on this was on the bottom side. And it was these injector pin marks. The one beef I have with this car, actually, would be these injector pin marks. Now, I, I started, but they're so deep. And you know, honest guys, I finally got to the point I said, you know what? It's close enough. It'll be sitting on a, it'll be sitting on a shelf. We're not going to see the bottom side all that much. So, uh, that's where I got with that, but it still builds to a nice looking car. And I don't know about this. I mean, look at that gap. I don't know if, 
you know, it seems like there should have been a filler panel in there. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, but still builds up nice regardless. I dirtied up the exhaust a little bit here. Uh, got the white drive shaft in it. But by and large, just a nice kit. I, I'm satisfied with it, you know. Uh, and this paint is actually an automotive uh, fast dry enamel. At, uh, and I'll get, I'm going to grab that can real quick. One second here, guys. This is the paint. And I, I largely use this paint. I mean, I really like it. Uh, now, if you're going to use this kind of paint, Definitely, definitely wear a mask. Uh, even if you get your uh, spray booth, definitely wear a mask with this because it's pretty stout stuff. Um, it's just a B3 Super Blue 7273 year, and that's what I use for my petty cars. Uh, because I've got quite a few petty cars going on here, so that's what I use on that. And then the red part here is a Dodge uh r4 charger red so it's a really nice uh and it doesn't it's not that far off i mean if you look at the box there we'll tilt that up a little bit that's actually a pretty good match so that's what i found with that uh to be a good color for that so all in all uh i've really got no major beefs with this kit at all um, everything went together oh and one thing about that windshield frame that when I talked to those guys on the phone, they actually told me they're 71, 72, 73 chargers had the very same problem. They said because this was so thin, uh, apparently when I came out of the molds, they had trouble with most all these warping, but I, they was in the process of working on it. And for those instructions that I showed you, I actually, when I talked to them about the body, I actually mentioned that in the decals, and they said because that was from some kind of CAD program, apparently, that uh, they were working on that issue, too, to improve their uh, instruction sheet. So I said I have not bought any more of their kits like this, so I don't know if they've got that uh, upgraded yet or not, but they I knew it you know, a year, year and a half ago, they were actually working on that to get it done. So, But I got the new body ordered, everything, and everything went went really well on it and super fit on this one. No, no problems at all whatsoever. Uh, and that brings me up to something else here before too long. I'm actually going to start my first, uh, build on my channel. Uh, some will be on camera. A lot will be off camera, but I'm going to give you updates as I go. And that is going to be this. The Kale Yarborough number 27 Valvoline car uh, would be a Buick, the Buick Regal. Now, they had one uh, of these in a monogram years ago, but it was a number 47 Ron Bouchard car. You know, I actually bought this at a at a flea market and or an antique store, I think actually what it was. And I bought that and I said, well, I've always liked that car and I wanted to build it, but I opened the box and it was painted a different color than white. Somebody else had started it in a different paint scheme. Uh, but the decals were roached in it. They had gotten all wet and just ruined. So there was no way to do that. So I started scrolling Mike's decals for these decals. And I don't know why I didn't come across the, the Valvoline number 27 at that time. But I come across some uh, Daryl Waltrip decals, uh, the Mountain Dew. So I ended up doing a Mountain Dew car. And one of these days, I'll bring it out and throw it on the bench, and we'll take a look at it. But anyway, that's going to be my first uh, my first build. And they give you the option to do 1981 version or the 1982 version. So just very minor differences uh, between those two. So that's going to be my build. And we'll do that here uh, in a couple videos. I got a four-part series coming up here uh, I think on the next video that you see will be part one of a four-part series. Uh, it's some really cool stuff. I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna like it. Uh, so, with that, I think that's about all I had. I think this video is about ready to wrap up for today. So, uh, 
As I wrap up here, uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. If you like the channel, uh, come on back. And I tell you what, I'd love to see some pictures of you guys' builds uh, as well. So if you'd be interested in sharing some of your builds with me, uh, go ahead and hit me up at the email address in the description. Uh, can't wait to hear from you guys. I'd like to see what you got. Uh, share it. And until next time, this is Eric from Eric's Model Garage. Uh, you guys have a great day. God bless and happy modeling.